Americans held hostage behind enemy lines. Day 109. Well, everybody else seems to have turned the page. We refuse to on this program. 109 days counting, and tonight the Taliban, along with the rest of America's enemies, they are now taking advantage of your president, Joe Biden's obvious weakness on the world stage. Coming up, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo will join us with the very latest out of Russia, China, the Middle East, Afghanistan. And later, Stacey Abrams thinks that she's running for re-election as the rightful governor of Georgia. We'll have full coverage of the midterm elections. That is straight ahead. Alec Baldwin now speaking out after allegedly killing a person on the set of a movie. Now, the far-left actor is now claiming he never pulled the trigger before accidentally shooting two people on a movie set. Well, if he didn't pull the trigger, who did? But first, we begin with an important Christmas message, yes, from President Joe Biden. Today, he proudly announced that he takes no responsibility at all whatsoever for the supply chain crisis. And according to Joe, if your kids' presents do not arrive in time for Christmas, you better take it up with Santa Claus. Take a look. Now, I can't promise that every person will get every gift they want on time. Only Santa Claus can keep that promise. But there are items every year that sell out that are hard to find. Some of you moms and dads may remember Cabbage Patch Kids back in the 80s or Beanie Babies in the 90s or other toys that have run out at Christmas time in past years when there was no supply chain problem. All right, Joe, I want you to think the supply chain crisis is a myth and it's Santa Claus's fault. According to him, the empty shelves that you see right here are not empty. Now, if your presents don't arrive in time, you're to blame, well, of course, Santa. And if you can't blame him, why not blame Donald Trump? Mm -hmm. I guess everybody's to blame but him. Jen Psaki calling it the tragedy of the delayed treadmill. According to Mayor Pete, you should have done your Christmas shopping before Halloween. Uh, if not, oh, well, so sad, too bad. Your kids will be crying for Christmas, not liking Santa Claus, and they won't be happy. You might remember some of these moments. And this administration guaranteed that holiday packages will arrive on time. We are not the Postal Service or UPS or FedEx. Uh, we cannot guarantee. I think there's always been two kinds of Christmas shoppers. There's the ones who have all their list completed by Halloween, and then there's people like me who show up at the mall on Christmas Eve. If you're in that latter bucket, uh, obviously there's going to be more challenges. People couldn't get dishwashers and and furniture and treadmills delivered on time, not to mention all sorts of other things. So why the is it... The tragedy of the short, the treadmill that's delayed. Right. Fundamentally, supply chains and logistics are run by the private sector. P you know, people say to me, will Christmas gifts be delivered? To which I say, call FedEx. You know, that that isn't what the government does. Blame the Postal Service, UPS, FedEx. As you can see, the buck does not stop with Joe or anybody in the White House. In fact, Chief of Staff Ron Klain, he actually thinks this economy is doing great. Now, today in a tweet that should be deeply concerning to every American, Klain is writing, quote, stronger COVID measures produce stronger economic outcomes. Oh, we need more draconian COVID measures. That's the answer to a, to a healthy economy. Of course, the opposite is true, and as you can see, the Biden administration takes responsibility for nothing, including the ongoing pandemic that Biden promised he would shut down. Now, this new Omicron variant, sadly, it is now officially here, confirmed in the U.S. Thankfully, this new strain of COVID, according to early reports, causes mild symptoms, although it may be more contagious. And while I always encourage everyone to take the pandemic seriously, there is, as of today, no reason to panic. Check with your doctor. But that didn't stop Joe Biden from banning travel from a variety of African countries. But when Donald Trump banned tra travel from China, where the virus originated from, Biden called him hysterical, xenophobic, and a fear monger, and of course suggested he's racist. Apparently now it's okay because President Joe uh, and Dr. Fauci approve. But today, even Fauci could not explain the African ban. Take a look. What justify, what justify imposing a travel ban on countries that have zero case of the Omicron uh, uh, variant? You know, that's a very good question, an important question, and, and we did struggle with that. But we wanted to see if we could bide time temporarily. So I do hope that this gets sorted out and lifted before it has any significant impact on your country. 
I still want to know why the NIH gave money to the Eco Alliance that, uh, according to the NIH, was involved in gain of function research at the Wuhan Virology Lab on bat coronaviruses. Anyway, to recap, according to Biden, Trump was a racist for banning travel from China where the outbreak started. It's perfectly okay for him to ban travel from certain African countries where the Omicron variant isn't even really present. Really, Joe? Now, of course, throughout this entire pandemic, there's one thing we can always count on, and that is the great flip-flop Dr. Fauci, uh, who's in love with his newfound celebrity status. His 15 minutes have been over a long, long time ago. He should be fired. And like all good celebrities, Fauci recently spent some quality time with Barack Obama during an event that was open to the press. And, of course, Today, Fauci was more than happy to spend a long time at the White House press briefing speculating about anything and everything, including new COVID-19 testing requirements. But let not your hearts be troubled, because if you're an illegal immigrant and you unlawfully, you know, break the laws, don't respect our borders, our sovereignty, these new rules won't apply to you. That doesn't make sense, does it? But... Nothing he says makes sense. This is the guy that said in March of 2020 on 60 Minutes, oh, that mask isn't going to work. That mask, you're not going to work. Take a look. As you advise the president about the possibility of new testing requirements for people coming into this country, does that include everybody? The answer is yes, because you know that the new, uh, uh, the new uh, uh, regulation, if you want to call it that, is that anybody and everybody who's coming into the country needs to get a test within 24 hours of getting on the plane to come here. Well, what about people who don't take a plane and just these border crossers coming in in huge numbers? Yeah, no, but that's a different issue. For example, when you talk, we still have Title 42 with regard to protection at the border. So there are protections at the border that you don't have the capability, as you know, of somebody getting on a plane, getting checked, looking at a passport. We don't have that there, but we can get some degree of mitigation. There you go. That's right. Fauci and Biden more than happy to ban travel from Africa. But if you enter this country illegally, well, you just waltz right through and you get preferential treatment. You get no testing because Jen Psaki says you're not going to be here very long. And then you don't need a COVID vaccine mandate because, uh, oh, you're not going to be here very long. Uh, anyway. As we continue, it's no wonder that more Americans have died under Biden's watch from 2021 and from COVID-19 in 2021 than under Trump's watch in 2020. Peter Ducey asked Jen Psaki about this, and Psaki got very, very angry. Take a look. In 2020, when roughly 220,000 Americans had already died of COVID, Joe Biden said about Trump, anyone who is responsible for that many deaths should not remain as president of the United States of America. Is that still the standard now that more Americans have died under President Biden than President Trump? Well, I think the fundamental question here is, what are you doing to save lives and protect people? And the former president was suggesting people inject bleach. He apparently, reportedly, didn't even share with people he was going to interact with that he had tested positive for COVID himself. He continued to provide a forum for misinformation, which probably led to people not getting, uh, not taking steps forward to get to protect themselves, to wear masks, to eventually get vaccinated. This president has made the vaccine widely available. He's relied on the health, uh, the advice of his health and medical experts. We all know Jen Psaki, Biden, and Fauci are all liars, and, of course, they love to smear President Trump. But really, what else can she do? Joe Biden is a disaster. His policies are terrible. His brain is barely functioning. America is now facing several major crises. He has caused every one, and all of them have been preventable. Now, Republicans, independents, Democrats are desperately looking for a better way forward. 